Hello friends, welcome to my lecture series on digital signal processing. In the previous lecture, we saw the concept and physical interpretation of Fourier series and Fourier transform and discretization of signals using sampling theorem. Fourier series gives the spectrum of periodic analog function. However, it cannot be applied to non-periodic functions. This limitation of the Fourier series is overcome by Fourier transform by evaluating Fourier series under limiting case, which we had seen in our previous lecture. The Fourier transform gives spectrum of periodic as well as non-periodic functions, which includes both signals and systems. However, the Fourier transform also has a limitation that is it doesn't give information about attenuation and transient experienced by signal whenever it is passed through a system because very often system has resistive element which causes attenuation in the signal while energy storage elements like inductor and capacitor which causes transient in the signal and hence the Fourier transform limitation which is overcome by introducing a new model which results in Laplace and Z transform. So in today's lecture we are going to address the limitation of Fourier transform and the solution for that limitation as Laplace and Z transform. Consider the Fourier transform fundamental definition as x of omega equal to integration of x of t into e raised to minus j omega t dt where omega is equal to 2 pi f. The limitation of Fourier transform is signal experiences attenuation and transient while passing through the system. Now, this can be modeled as exponentially decaying function which covers transient and attenuation and the signal is modeled as original function x of t multiplied with exponentially decaying function e raised to minus sigma t where sigma is called attenuation constant and x of t is a original function. Now here the new model of the signal is called g of t as shown in this figure. Now when we calculate the Fourier transform of g of t by substituting g of t in the fundamental definition of the Fourier transform, we will get the expression integration of x of t e raised to minus sigma t into e raised to minus j omega t dt with limits of integration from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now here the powers of exponential terms can be added which will give the new variable s equal to sigma plus j omega and this is called complex frequency variable where sigma forms attenuation constant and omega which is equal to 2 pi f forms angular frequency. The above equation is simplified to integration of x of t into e raised to minus st dt which becomes function of s and hence the frequency variable capital X of sigma comma omega will become x of s where s includes both the terms sigma and omega as mentioned by s is equal to sigma plus j omega. So here we got a new transform relation which is called Laplace transform and it is also known as a complex Fourier transform because we came across a new frequency variable s is equal to sigma plus j omega. Now here what are the implications of the real term e raised to minus sigma t. Now this will result in the attenuation term in the integration can cause divergence of the integration which is evaluated from minus infinity to plus infinity and therefore here the new concepts for validity of integration came into existence which is called convergence and in turn the convergence is related to the stability of the system. So here we have to understand the concept of the s-plane which will define the region of convergence. Now s-plane is a complex plane where s is equal to sigma plus j omega and it has three main areas. The first one is left hand side of the s-plane for which sigma is less than zero. Second region is sigma greater than zero which forms the right hand side of the s-plane 
and the third region is a g omega axis for which sigma equal to 0. So when sigma equal to 0, e raised to minus sigma t becomes 1 and hence Laplace transform becomes Fourier transform. So here one has to understand when Laplace transform is evaluated on the g omega axis for which sigma equal to 0, it is nothing but Fourier transform. So this is a simple interrelationship between Fourier transform and Laplace transform. The convergence of Laplace transform will result in three different concepts of causality. Here, if you consider the integration from minus infinity to zero, then x of t, which exists for t less than zero, is called anti-causal function. The term x of t evaluated from zero to infinity is called causal term. And when both anti-causal and causal terms are existing in x of t, then system is called non-causal system. So all the three system needs to be evaluated for region of convergence and that will get connected to the concept of stability which we shall see in the next lecture. Now here the important point is if system is a discrete type system then how one can apply Laplace transform to discrete version of the signal or a system. So here we can apply the sampling theorem which we have already studied in our previous lecture to Laplace transform. So this is a fundamental definition of the Laplace transform that is x of s is equal to integration of x of t e raised to minus st dt with limits of integration from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now when signal or system is discretized in time domain using train of impulses, then signal model becomes xst equal to x of t multiplied with s of t, which in turn become x of nts, that is signal exists only at the sampling interval, which is sampled at uniform time interval ts. And that can be equivalently represented as a x of n because ts is constant. When you apply the sampling theorem to Laplace transform equation, then the integration will become summation. T e will become nts and therefore x of t will become x of n. Now e raised to minus st can be computed by substituting value of s. Now here s is equal to sigma plus j 2 pi f into nts where t is substituted as nts. Now ts can be written as 1 by fs and when move inside this term then the effective term st is equal to sigma ts plus j 2 pi f by fs into n. So f by fs is called digital frequency or a normalized frequency. Therefore, the e raised to st term becomes e raised to sigma ts raised to n into e raised to j 2 pi f n where 2 pi f can be replaced by omega. And hence the final equation for e raised to st is equal to r into e raised to j omega n where r is equal to e raised to sigma ts which becomes a real term. Now this new term r into e raised to j omega forms the equation of a circle where r is a radius of the circle while omega is a angle of the vector with respect to x axis. Now another point is r into e raised to j omega also form a complex term which is mathematically represented as z and therefore e raised to st will become z raised to n where z is equal to r into e raised to j omega. Here we came across a new variable z which represents a z plane which is also a complex plane and the Laplace transform equation becomes x of z is equal to 
integration replaced by summation with limits of integration from minus infinity to plus infinity because here t tends to minus infinity to plus infinity and therefore n varies from minus infinity to plus infinity x of t becomes x of n and e raised to minus st becomes z raised to minus n so here on the right hand side the equation is evaluated with respect to n and it becomes function of z and therefore the left hand side term x of s gets transformed to x of z and we came across a new equation in the form of z which is called z transform so here one has to note the point there is no difference between z transform and laplace transform laplace transform is applicable to analog functions while z transform is applicable to discrete time functions and the concept of convergence and stability still remains valid for z transform and hence whenever we are studying laplace and z transform we also study the region of convergence and stability including the causality of the function which forms a very important design aspects in analog and digital system design now since z plane which is a complex plane however it represents equation of a circle so it is represented as a circle in a complex plane with radius r and angle omega so z is equal to r into e raised to g omega which will form a circle in the z plane now here the circle in the red color indicates radius equal to 1 now omega varies from 0 to 2 pi or it can be also interpreted as 0 to pi in the positive direction and 0 to minus pi in the negative direction so both the interpretations are correct now we'll see what is the relationship of z plane with s plane now here this relationship can be obtained using equation r is equal to sigma ts now s plane is described with three values of sigma that is sigma less than 0 which will make e raised to sigma ts less than 1 in z plane because r becomes less than 1 second one is sigma greater than 0 which will make r greater than 1 so that is a area outside the unit circle and when sigma equal to 0 r will become 1 so which gets mapped to the unit circle that is g omega axis will get mapped to the unit circle so sigma greater than 0 will get mapped to area outside the unit circle and sigma less than 0 will get mapped area inside the unit circle in z plane so that this is a relationship between z plane and s plane with physical interpretation so in nutshell this shows how one can understand mapping of s plane to z plane and z plane to s plane which is very important in understanding of designing of the discrete time system whenever analog system counterpart is available now here we'll see one more relationship when r is equal to 1 that is sigma equal to 0 z transform equation becomes x of omega equal to summation n is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity x of n into e raised to minus g omega n because here we have substituted z is equal to r into e raised to g omega where r is 1 and therefore we come across equation in the fourier domain which is called discrete time fourier transform so z transform evaluated on the unit circle becomes discrete time fourier transform and this equation can also be obtained by sampling fourier transform in time domain so one can do one to one mapping by applying a sampling theorem where integration will become summation x of t will become x of n and e raised to minus g omega t 
will become e raised to minus j omega n. It shows the relationship between fundamental definition of Fourier transform, its limitation overcome by Laplace transform using exponential decaying model and it gives information about attenuation and transient experience by signal whenever it is passing through a, a system. The term e raised to minus sigma t results in convergence concept of Laplace transform equation because it will result in sometime Laplace transform equation may diverge. One has to explain the region of convergence where Laplace transform equation is valid or it converges to the finite number or finite value which, which we shall address in the next lecture. The convergence concept gets connected to the stability. Now here we have defined the S plane. There are three regions and then sampling of Laplace transform in order to apply it to the discrete time function which results in a Z transform equation. So S plane gets mapped into a Z plane with three different areas in the circle where sigma equal to zero maps to unit circle, sigma less than zero maps to area inside the unit circle while sigma greater than zero maps outside the unit circle. So this gives interrelationship of Fourier transform, Laplace transform and Z transform and since there is a concept of convergence and stability. We have to see the constraint on the equations of Laplace and Z transform, which we shall see in the next lecture. When discrete time Fourier transform is sampled in frequency domain, then the equation becomes DFT, which we shall see in another lecture. And the fast algorithms of the DFT becomes FFT. So, this lecture gives a overall representation of Fourier transform, Laplace transform, Z transform, discrete time Fourier transform and the sampling of discrete time Fourier transform which gives discrete Fourier transform and the fast algorithm of discrete Fourier transform results in FFT. So in the next lecture, we'll see the concept of convergence and stability. I hope you must have enjoyed this lecture and thank you for your patience and watching my show.